Okay. All right. So, Dr. Dodson, explain to us your history with the um. synthesis essay. <laughs> Um, synthesis essay is like my area of um, expertise on the grading of the AP exam. So how many times have you graded the synthesis essay? Mm, this coming year will be my fifth year and I've done the synthesis all but one year. Great. Um, so what are some ways to be successful on the synthesis essay? Um, briefly read all of the materials that are given. And then um, I would evaluate whether or not they're positive or negative, meaning they're for or against, or if they're just neutral, and how can you best use that? Because sometimes you can use something that's the opposite as a counter argument. And so that's the first thing that I would do. Great. Um, in terms of the thesis statements, what are successful thesis statements on th synthesis essays? Um, they answer the prompt, <laughs> and they're in the first sentence. Okay, so no context beforehand? Um, no, really and truly, my experience has been, both as a grader, but also as a person who listens to other graders, just get what you need to answer out. Okay, great. Um, about how long are top scoring synthesis essays? They are the longer ones, but that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're writing forever, that you're getting a good score. Mm -hmm. So the long ones typically that score high, score high because of what they have put in, the, in there. So it, it doesn't really matter how long it is as long as it's quality. Okay, so let's talk about those top bands. You say that it, depends on what they put in there. How would you qualify what's in a eight, nine synthesis essay? Well, eight and nines are very unusual. So if they're not receiving an eight or a nine on their papers, that's not unusual at all. Eight and nines really are in reserve for the very, very, very best of the best. And um, that's difficult for some of the kids here to kind of understand and it's difficult for all public school kids who come from you know, suburban areas to understand. But you're competing on a national level, and because you're competing on a national level, the um, the eights and nines are the ones that are so sparkly they can't be anything other than an eight or a nine, and they really just kind of slap you when you're reading them. They're they're so good they just slap you. Okay. <laughs> so they're they're um, mature typically. Um, they're well thought out. They take the prompt, they answer the prompt, but then they take it to a new level where they're placing it into context of society or they're placing it into context of history or they're relating it to other subject matters. And we can see that clearly. Mm -hmm. um, so what are, what should they be aiming at for a six or seven? Um, six or sevens, sixes are really just solid. I just call those the solid papers. Um, they do what they're supposed to do, meaning they answer the prompt. They have their three sources. The three sources are not just referred to, but they're, you know, played with a little bit where they are thinking about it and how they relate to the other ones. Um, and um, it, it would be like TCAP writing assessments, good scoring papers. That would be a six. Mm -hmm. And so if I have an organization where each of my body paragraphs deals with one uh, source, is that okay or should I avoid that? Okay, say the question again. Uh, so if I am writing a synthesis essay and each of my body paragraphs deals with one source, just with that source, um, is that a positive or a negative? Depends on how it's used. Um, Typically, there's one source in the packet of materials that can be used as like the anchor source for everything. Mm -hmm. And if the student kind of recognizes that it can be used as the anchor source and then is using and playing the other ones off of the anchor source, that could be okay. And what do you mean by anchor source? Um, it it um, contains the most statistics. It contains the most information that's both positive and negative. It takes into account all points of the argument and typically there's just one piece in the packet materials that does that. Okay. 
In terms of the language, um, how formal or informal should this essay be? It should be formal, um, but we need to be able to hear your voice. Okay, so can I use first and second person pronouns? Um, not first person pronouns. Okay, no. so no I or me. No I's or me's. Um, but you can have use? Understood use. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, what about rhetorical questions? Um, we're really and truly not, well, good writers tend to do that anyway. They'll put a lot of rhetorical devices into their writing, but they're not forcing it to be put in there. Um, it just happens naturally. And if people use rhetorical questions naturally and it doesn't seem like a gimmick, mm -hmm. then that would be okay. Okay. But um, typically, the eight and nine papers don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, okay, and last but not least, um, what are some common traps that writers of the census essay fall into which hurt their scores? Um, summarizing what has already been written and making out like that's analysis, because that's not analysis, that's summarizing. And or, or quoting too much material. Mm -hmm. um, if they quote too much material, I, that just automatically, as a reader, because I can read these suckers really fast, I, two to three minutes on every essay, which yeah. is not very much at all. Um, and they need to realize that that's what we're all trained to do. So if we're spending a long time on an essay, that either means it's a really good paper or a really bad paper. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so, we're supposed to write for an audience. What would you, how would you describe the AP reader as an audience? <laughs> um, well, if you can imagine a whole room of me's <laughs> in one place. They might not know you, though. That's not be Some of them know me, though. Okay. Um, um, no. uh, everybody, has, everybody has a master's degree or above. Mm -hmm. The majority of us have doctorate degrees. And um, really and truly, the difference between those two differentiations as far as the schooling goes is the amount of writing that we are able to do. And so the doctoral level people really do smell things that are not really academic mm -hmm. pieces of work. I mean, immediately. We're like, that's they're just faking it. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, the kids need to know that will know if they're faking. Mm -hmm. so, so you can't uh, try to trick the readers. No, there's no tricking us. We're a crazy group of people. That um, really have a specific answer and support it with evidence. Yeah, they need to know that everybody that's chosen to read the exams are um, chosen out of a whole bunch of people. And they only take, they only take 200 of us. And um, we're we're pretty much all the same. And we've taught more than five years in the AP, mm -hmm. and we were successful. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, that you taught, but you were also successful. Mm -hmm. And um, their success is the percentage rate pass, um, and that's what they're looking for, because they figure that the teachers who can't get their ki own kids to pass shouldn't be able to read, which okay. is pretty much true. Great. Uh, anything else that you'd like them to know about the census assessment? Um... It is normally current event oriented, okay? And when I say that is, like the Postal Service recently has been having a lot of problems financially. And three years ago, one of our synthesis essays had to do with whether or not we should get rid of the Postal Service altogether or if we should come up with solutions on how to fix it, mm -hmm. okay? And the kids were asked to fix it if they wanted to. So that was part of the synthesis. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really cool question, actually. And some of their answers were really good. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they, they sent it to the U.S. Postal Service so that they could see some of the answers that got eight and nines because they were good answers. Um, so if they'll read current events and keep up with current events, they're more likely to run across a, a question that they already have background knowledge on. Okay. And that actually leads me to my one another question that we had today, which was how much should your own understanding of the topic 
influence your thesis, or should it only be guided by the sources? Um, both. The eights and the nines will answer the prompt, but then when we start launching, because I call it the launch, mm -hmm. okay, um, they do what they're supposed to do, they answer the prompt, but then at the end, they start launching into this whole new way of thinking about something, and that really is the eight or nine. Okay. So if you don't have any background knowledge, your chances of scoring higher are diminished greatly. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Bye, guys.